this category of questions are called solving trigonometric equations, right? They're equations, it says find solutions, and there's just trig all the way through it, okay? So let's start with this top one. Um, I haven't, I've not pulled any punches, okay? These are both HSC style questions. I could have given you like an easy one to start off with, but I thought, nah, it's Thursday, we're gonna run out of time, okay? So let's have a look at this guy. Find all solutions, and then they throw at you what looks like a fairly complicated mess, okay? Now what we're gonna do is turn this complicated mess into something much more, um, much more tame that we can deal with, okay? So does anyone have any suggestions? What might be a first step we could take to make this better to deal with? Because it's like a disaster right now. Sorry. Uh, try it into a form that we know. Okay, so I want to get this into a form that we know. That's for sure what, where we're going to head. I will point out for all of you, maybe some of you already are realizing this, it's going to at least take me three or four lines to get to that point. Okay, um, do you want to suggest what can we do practically? So we add two to the other side. Okay, so you're looking at this, um, this constant here. Now, I know this is going to be, sound strange, but even though it might initially look simpler to add two to both sides, and then we just have the trig stuff on the left-hand side, I will suggest that in this case, and in most cases like this, actually that will be counterproductive. Uh, it's good to keep everything on the left-hand side, okay? What, what are you thinking, John? Okay, fantastic. So, sorry, I think you were starting to head there, right? Now, for those of you who are like, wait, what was he just talking about? If you have it there, go pull open your reference sheet, okay? Now, here's page one. It's pretty simple stuff. We don't look at page one very much, to be honest. Page two, you can see a lot of the trig stuff comes in. And what John's referring to is this guy here, underneath trigonometric identities. So, you can see right down the bottom, uh, cos squared plus sine squared x equals 1, right? Cos squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. This has a name, by the way. Does anyone know what it's called? It's not important if you don't know its name, but um, it's called the Pythagorean identity because if you've got a right-angled triangle, its sides can be sine, cosine, and 1 in the unit circle, right? So this is literally Pythagoras, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but with trig, okay? So how can we use this? Well, if I note, I'm going to say, I'm going to literally write this, uh, this first line, welcome, it's probably not essential, but for the sake of our working, so you know what's going on, I'm going to write it for us. Since we have this identity up our sleeve, cos squared plus sine squared equals 1. Therefore, um, as John suggested, that sine squared x in the top line, I can substitute it if I just rearrange this line a little bit. Right? I can say, since that is true, sine squared by itself is equal to, uh, and John went straight to this line actually, 1 minus cos squared x. You okay with that? Right? Now, why is this helpful to us? Why is that a good substitution to make into our first line? Any takers? Shane Barbie? Fantastic. So part of the problem here is you've got sines and cosines mixed together, but we're going to make this all in terms of cosine and then we can work with it. Okay, so let's go ahead. We'll make the substitution. Therefore, 2 outside of, I'm not going to write sine squared x, I'm going to write the substitution, 1 minus cos squared x. And then I'll write the rest of the line. Okay, now this already looks healthier, right? Um, I can start to expand some stuff, some stuff's going to cancel. What happens when I expand? What do I get out the front? 2, two minus two cos, 2 cos squared x, and then everything else, right? Now, you can see in this case, it's just like super lazy, right? That 2 and that minus 2, they're just going to cancel. So that's great. That's one reason why, you know, Serang suggested we, we add 2 to both sides. There was not really much point to doing that. Even if they don't cancel though, Right? Suppose, you don't have to write this, but suppose it was like a 3 at the front there, right? Even if they don't cancel, you still want everything on the left-hand side because why? Why do we want everything on one side? Tyler, what are you thinking? It's easier to work with. I'm going to factorize eventually. You want everything on one side so you can factorize, okay? In this case, the factorization is really quite straightforward. You've got minus 2 cos squared x there plus cos x. Um, what can I factor out? cos x. That leaves me with uh, this guy here is going to turn into 1 and then this guy here is going to turn into minus 2 cos x. So I'm actually going to write that. We usually write things with the positive first. So 1 minus 2 cos x. There we go. That's equal to 0. Okay. Now I feel like this is sort of mission accomplishing that now I can work with this. There are two parts to it. Sorry, that's bothering me. Let me fix that. 
There are two parts to it which we're going to solve independently. Two factors which we will get solutions from in each case, right? So if you've got something times something and they equal zero, um, either of them could be equal to zero and you get solutions, right? Does that make sense? So we can do this. If that's zero, then the lie will be true. And then also, if this is zero, the equation will be true, okay? Now, just before I go any further, hands up if you reckon I could take it from here. I could manage, hands up straight. Okay, can I give you a minute or two? You're gonna get a bunch of solutions out of this, but I'm gonna pause, because I think we're at a much more comfortable point. I'll come around, have a look, and then I'll show you how we combine everything together, okay? Off you go. Okay, now, I was wandering around having a quick look. So, let me bring you back together. Now the first thing I'm gonna say is, you should find four solutions. If you didn't find four solutions, something has gone wrong. That's the first thing I'm gonna say. The second thing is, I notice a lot of you, like kind of a worrying number of you actually, um, start to solve this problem, this one right here, and you started to think in degrees. Now I don't, that's not a bad thing objectively to do because we're more comfortable with degrees. We can come up with those answers, especially for exact values, much more quickly and reliably. That's nice. But I'm gonna give you all the warning. Number one, you would not believe how many students think in degrees and then they forget to come back to radians. The domain is in radians, we must supply our answer in radians. That's the first danger. Um, the second one is, you're just not gonna escape radians. Like you might as well start to get used to this thing, right? It's kind of like living in a foreign country to begin with, you're like, I don't know how to speak this language. Well, if you're gonna live there long term, you might as well start learning the language, even as a novice, because it's gonna help you. Make sense? And I know radians can feel like a foreign language. Raise your hand if you drew a graph on your page, anyone? One person, okay, hooray, I know. someone, all right. <laughs> all right, sure, all right, now you will see I drew a graph. It's not a beautiful one, but it's gonna be my primary instrument to know what my solutions are for um, these two parts of the equation. So, for starters, cos x equals zero. The graph is immediately the best place to go here because if you were thinking of quadrants or um, the triangle, all those kinds of things, right? You're kind of already up the creek without a paddle because both the quadrants approach and just using a triangle rely on the fact that we define cos as adjacent on hypotenuse. Right? That's how we start off, yeah? Well, if adjacent on hypotenuse is zero, what kind of triangle you got? You don't have a triangle. There's no adjacent. Like It's a side of no length, right? The problem that leads to with the quadrants diagram is, you know for the quadrants you've got, let's just quickly draw it, right? You've got A, S, T, C. Um, the C, for example, what does that mean? So cos is positive in that quadrant. It means cos is positive in that quadrant. Um, the T means that in this quadrant, uh, cos would be negative, right? So that you know where it's positive, you know where it's negative. Is cos positive or negative? And the answer is no. <laughs> it's not positive, it's not negative. The quadrants will not help you because you're actually on borderlines, right? Which is kind of tricky. The graph eats this for breakfast, right? 